What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and I am here today with a new show, a new season, a new series for me to do, which is going to be American Horror Story. This season is 1984. It's, um, season number nine. It's episode number one. So this season is taking a play on classic horror movies from the 80s, such as, you know, Friday the 13th, Michael Myers with Halloween, you know, um, what else you got? Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, what else you got? You got Carrie. You got a, the list can go on. Like horror is my genre, and I'm so excited to be doing this season. So without further ado, I follow it up. Without further ado, you guys, let's go ahead and just jump into tonight's video. All right, so the opening scene. So, you know, it's kind of like, it kind of reminds you of Camp Crystal Lake with um, Friday the 13th with, you know, Jason and with his mom in the original Friday the 13th. Because you guys remember in the original Friday the 13th, Jason's mom, Mrs. Voorhees, was the one that was doing all the killings because the camp counselors completely, you know, neglected Jason the la punk bitch couldn't swim, so the la punk bitch died. Yes, I call Jason a punk bitch. Because Jason is a punk bitch. Like, what kind of killer is afraid of water? A punk bitch, a punk bitch like Jason. But that's neither here nor there. So, like, yeah, the sh um, show, it starts out, you know, with a scene like, um, what, well, you know, in, J in Friday the 13th, you know, the camp counselors, they can't keep it in their pants, you know, the, the, they gotta have sex. This one was an interesting take. The counselors were having a threesome. I'm like, whoa. We never saw that ever in a horror movie where they had a threesome. So then the killer, he comes and he's, you know, he shoots his knife through two of them's necks and kills them. And then he just kills the other one. And as a souvenir, he cuts off their ears and he puts it on his chain. I'm like, uh, now that's, I'm like, that's a little repulsive, a little nasty, but. I'm here for it and I'm not I'm not mad about it. So and then he started walking out of my oh the killer is pigeon toed. Even worse. <laughs> Alright, so then we have our um, main cast. We see them in their, you know, their aerobics class. That pelvic thrust aerobics, pelvic thrust, pelvic thrust, pelvic thrust. So we have Xavier, we have Montana, we have Ray, we have Chet, and we have Brooke. So um once the class ends, we see um Brooke and we see Montana, they're in the showers. And Montana's trying to get to know Brooke. And she was coming off mad abrasive. Like, I'm like, wow. Like, can you be a little bit less nice? I mean, could you be a little bit nice to the girl? So, you know, she was talking about, you know, I saw you looking at my friend Chet. You want to sleep with him, don't you? She's like, no, I'm a virgin. Keep it that way. Remember what Randy said in Scream, uh, Scream, 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 Scream 3. Keep it, keep it, keep it. Do not let nobody take their virginity. The minute they take your virginity, you're dead. As long as you stay a virgin, you'll stay alive. So, Brooke, keep your virginity, girl. Keep it. Remember what Randy said. Just always remember, Randy says, do not lose your virginity. Because remember, he lost his virginity to Karen Kolchak. In the, uh, and they said, you know, creepy Karen. Yes, creepy Karen. So, yes, keep your virginity, Brooke. Keep it. Guard it. Safeguard that shit like that's gonna keep you alive through this whole season. Keep that pocketbook safe All right, so the group was talking about how they all met each other. I I was kind of lost with they because I know I think Chet might I think Montana might have ran into Chet in his car It was just kind of confusing how they know each other, but they all know each other Technically they know each other technically they might not 100% know each other and then you know um, um Xavier He's talking about this killer that's on the loose, that's been killing people, and the cops have named him the, um, what did they name him? They have named him the Night Stalker, and they believe he's tied to a lot of the murders that have happened in the L.A. area. And, you know, um, like I said, they're talking about that. And Montana made a, a good point. She says, you know, um, they say most serial killers come, well, no, this was actually Brooke that said this. That serial, that serial killers typically kill during the summer because people do what? They leave their windows open. I was like, wow, that that is kind of true, though, when you think about it. Especially if you're, like, in a southern state, you do leave your windows open because it does be hot. But, God damn, that just makes you think about it. Like, maybe I should leave my windows closed during the summer because I don't want no killer just sneaking through my window to kill me. We good on that. 
We're good on that. So, so good on that. Um... So then Xavier's like, you know, when he's getting out of town for the summer, he's going to um, the camp. And he's telling everybody, like, yo, y'all should come with me. And they're thinking, like, yeah, let's do that. And I'm just like, no, don't do that. That's not going to be a good idea. So, you know, everyone is on board to go to um, camp. What is the name of the camp? Camp Camp Redwood. And it's also the name of the episode, Camp Redwood. Now, Brooke is not on board because Brooke is going to take summer classes at Santa Monica College. And, you know, um, Montana's like, well, girl, if you change your mind, here, take my number and call me. I'm like, wait a minute. Is Montana hitting on her now? Like, I was, like, thoroughly confused when it came down to Montana and Brooke. Like, uh, um, are we, like, kind of flirting with one another? Well, technically, Brooke ain't flirting with Montana. I think Montana was flirting with Brooke. I'm just like, okay, whatever. So then later we see, and Brooke was the one who mentioned this, leaving your damn window open in the summer. And the night the, the night stalker got into her room in her room, asking her where her jewelry was. And, you know, she gave him the jewelry, but it went I guess it wasn't really much for him. So, you know, she then beats his ass, like she beats the hell out of him, and he tells her, I'll be back for you. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm going to move quick, fast, and in a hurry. So then she decides to go with the others to Camp Redwood. So, you know, the others, they on this RV. They drinking it up. They got the party drugs. They got the cocaine. They got the weed. They got everything that you could have that, well, that they might want. Not me. They might want. But, you know, they having a good time with each other. And then they stop and, um, at a, a gas station to get gas. So then Xavier goes to a, one of the pay phones. And he's listening to some messages on the phone. And those messages were just kind of really random and weird to me. I'm like, um, bro, if you don't hang that damn phone up, like, if you listen to that message, it's creepy as fuck, and you still sitting here listening to it, no. I would have to, I'd be like, you know what, click. And then my was like, come on, we gotta go, we gotta get to Camp Redwood. And the attendant was like, um, you guys might want to turn to go the other direction. Do not go to Camp Redwood. But do they listen to the um, attendant? No. So then, you know, they keep driving and they run over a dude. <laughs> and if I thought they were going to leave, I thought for a minute they going to leave him. I'm like, oh, so this is going to be like, I know what you did last summer when they killed the man. And, you know, they killed the man. Did they? No, they didn't kill him. They ran that man over and left him for dead. And um, I know what you did last summer. They ran the man over and left him for dead. I'm like, uh oh, this is going to be like, I know what you did last summer. Yes, I know my horror movies. The only horror movie that I just will not sit and watch is It. I'm terrified to death of fucking clowns. God, I hate clowns. With a passion. So, you know, they decide to take Roadkill with them. Because that's what I'm calling him is Roadkill. And, you know, um, they make it to Camp Redwood. And they meet this girl named Margaret. And, you know, um, they show Margaret Roadkill. And she's like, what happened to him? And, you know, um, Xavier like, oh, you know, we just, you know, found him on the side of the road. Nothing happened to him because Xavier wanted to say nothing happened to him. That he didn't want nobody to know that they ran him over. I'm like, you can look at his foot. Like, you ran over him in his foot. Like, his foot is twisted. Obviously, somebody hit homeboy. So, they take Roadkill to the infirmary where we um, meet N Nurse Rita, who is played by, um, you know, Candy from uh, Pose, Angelica Ross. That's her name. And, you know, um... You know, then we see Margaret. She gives them a tour of the camp. And, you know, she they we meet Chef Birdie. And then Xavier calls dibs on Chef Birdie. And Chef Birdie was like, you wouldn't know what to do. You wouldn't know what to do with this if it was offered to you. I'm like, ew. You want Chef Birdie. Chef Birdie looks and sounds like a man. Her voice is deep as hell. And you want Chef Birdie. Okay. So then Margaret, you know, tells them, like, you know, um, the, the guys shower first, the girls shower second, and it's separate. You know, the boys in one cabin, the girls in the other cabin. You don't commingle, you don't have sex, you don't do nothing. And I'm like, what are we supposed to do? She's like, you can, you know, you can rub one out, you can do whatever you gotta do, but there will be no sex had at Camp Redwood. I'm like, well, well okay, if you say so. All right, so all the kids are sitting by the campfire with a uh, nurse Rita. And they're just telling Nurse Rita that they're there because, you know, they want to get out of L.A. for the summer. 
and there's Rita. She works at a hospital, so she's never really worked in the camp environment before. But hell, they never even been camp counselors before, so they're all in the same boat. And then, you know, um, Brooke is talking about how she was attacked by the Night Stalker. And, you know, um, he told her he would come after her. And Montana's like, girl, nobody followed us up here. Nobody's going to come up here to bother us. We're good. And, you know, she said, nobody even knows we're here. And then Nurse was like, well, you know, something did happen here 14 years ago, right? Y'all do know that. And she then tells them that, um, you know, that that camp is known for one of the world's worst mass killings. And it was done by a guy named Benjamin Richter. And they also called him Mr. Jingles. And then, you know, she was talking about how he was in the army. And that's where he found his calling. I'm like, you call that a calling? Killing people? Okay. And then she said his his um his trademark was the fact that he cuts his um victim's ears off and he puts it on a chain to wear it as a necklace. And I'm just like, ew, that is disgusting. And she's like, you know, he killed 10 people that night that this happened. And then um Margaret shows up and Margaret says he actually did not kill 10 people. It was nine. And then Margaret moves her hair from around, moves her hair and shows that her ear is missing. And she was one of the victims, but she got away. She survived. What happened was, you know, he did he, he butchered her up. But she said she saw the light, and the light was God. And she was able to, you know, not she was not able she was able to hold herself. Like when he cut her ear, she didn't wince. She didn't make any kind of movement. She didn't do anything. She was just still like, "You done cutting my ear?" I'm just like, man, if somebody were to cut a part of my body. Uh, it's just no way I could sit there and play dead. Like, she didn't even flinch. She didn't blink. She was just sitting there like, and homie just cutting her ear up. Like, no. No, 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 no. No. So then we see in 1970, so we see Mr. Jingle's attack occur. But like I said, she woke up and she saw the light and she said it was Jesus. And I'm basically repeating myself. But she also said that, um, you know, she was, um, they asked, well, what happened to him? She said he was put on trial, and it only took them about an hour to convict him. And, you know, she tells them that she bought the camp to make her, you know, make up for her bad experience by having a positive experience. I'm like, girl, you don't know what you're in store for, huh? Do you? Do you? So then we see Roadkill. Roadkill wakes up, and then, you know, we see that Roadkill has no ear. And then, you know, Roadkill is telling Brooke that you shouldn't be here. Like, things are going to get bad. And then he, uh, they were talking about the payphone. He said the payphone didn't work. And because she, she was like, do you think, do I need to call your family? He says the phones don't work here. So, you know, um, so then she, then he asked, Roadkill asked her, where are they? She tells him where they are. And he tells her again, you need to leave. So then she goes and tells the others that, you know, she thinks something is seriously wrong with Roadkill. And then, you know, we meet the um, camp activity director and their boss, whose name is Trevor. And, you know, Montana, we can see right off the bat that Montana has a thing for him. So then we also do see Montana in the lake with no clothes on. And Trevor goes out there to the lake and Trevor pulls his pants off, his, you know, pulls his pants off, hops in the lake with her goes under the water and goes down on her but then montana notices in the distance that you can see some headlights flashing on them and she clenches her legs on him he comes back up she looks out lights are gone i'm like the fuck <laughs> come on why not leave at that point like that's creepy you see some headlights you see headlights you're in the lake naked Trying to get busy. Like, y'all have all the signs in the world to get the hell out, but you're going to stay. Why? <laughs> I don't get it. All right, guys, so this next thing we have is kind of reminiscent of Michael Myers in Halloween. Because if you guys remember, in the original Halloween, um, Dr. Loomis and, and the nurse, um, nurse, what is her name? Damn, I can't even think of her name right now. But the nurse that he killed in Halloween uh, H2O, you know what? It's so funny. They never even mentioned that nurse. They didn't mention her in Halloween. This last one that came out last year, they never mentioned her. Marion Chambers, that's her name. They never mentioned Marion Chambers in, they may have, but I don't remember. But, hmm, 
Marion Withers, or Chambers, Withers. I think that's her name. But I don't remember them mentioning her at all in this last movie. The last time we saw Marion was in Halloween H2O when Michael found her and he killed her and he killed her neighbor. But I'm getting all off topic because we're not talking about Halloween. We're talking about American Horror Story. But this scene was just reminiscent of that very first scene in Halloween when, you know, Michael had all the, um, you know, the, the, the patients at, um, at uh, Smith's Grove. They were walking in the yard. Very reminiscent of that. And remember, Michael, he... He opened, you know, he scared the shit out of Marion and he took, he stole the car, which I'm still trying to figure out to this day how the fuck Michael Myers learned how to drive. Like the man never, he never spoke, he never moved. Like how the hell does Michael Myers know how to drive at 61 years old? We're not even going to get into that. We'll talk about Halloween when the movies come out. Um, But yeah, at this clinic, much like with Michael Myers, the patients are wandering free on the yard. And Mr. Jingles is gone. So they were like, how did he get away? So we flash forward, we go back three hours, and we see when one of the orderlies was going to pass out the medications to them, he looked in Mr. Jingles' room, and Mr. Jingles in his room, he was he was standing on I don't he was he it appeared that he had hung himself. So the order was like, Well, you know, that's that's the taxpayers' money saved. Well, Mr. Jingles tricked the shit out of the orderly and kill the orderly and he snuck out by taking the orderly's keys so uh and then we see the doctor i think that's the, i think she's the doctor so we see her go in the room and she pulls in between the mattress and she pulls out and it's a clipping from the paper about the camp reopening so then we see at a at a gas station truck stop whichever one you want to call it we see a guy there, he's working on a vehicle, and this scene is reminiscent to the scene in Halloween 4 when Michael Myers had escaped from the... <laughs> like, how many times did Michael Myers have to escape <laughs> from a clinic? When they were transferring him from the one clinic to the other clinic because Jamie was his custodial ward, and, you know, they had him in an ambulance, and they said, you know, his, his muscles did not work. Like he's a he's a psycho. His muscles absolutely one hundred percent work. But you know, it was reminiscent of that scene because you know he killed he killed the um he killed everybody in that ambulance and then he went to that truck stop and Doctor Loomis found him at that truck stop and you know, damn you, Michael, pew, 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 pew. and he was shooting at him. And you guys, ooh, I got a lot of hair in my mouth from my beard. But um, you remember, guy, he uh, had that uh he had that crowbar. In his hand, and he stabbed the man. Well, it was opposite of what happened in the movie to this man. Mr. Jingles just dropped the fucking car on the man. I'm like, well, God damn, like, brutal. And then he smashed his face. Michael's done that before, right? Yep, I think Michael did that in his last movie where he smashed somebody's face. I am going to have so much fun with this show. I can see that right now. I'm going to have so much fun with this show. I'm probably going to talk a lot with this show, but I'm going to enjoy it nonetheless because, I, like I said, I love horror movies. I'm a horror fanatic. I know pretty much every horror movie there is, with the exception of It. Don't ever ask me shit about It because I can't tell you nothing about It because I don't like It. But, um, yeah, he killed him, killed that mechanic, and I'm pretty sure he sold his car. All right, so then at the camp, we see everybody. They are watching the Olympics. Now, Chet has been a complete dick because Chet did not get to go to the Olympics because Chet did what? He failed his drug test. And, um, like I said, he's just been a dick. And he had a can in his hand, and he tossed it, and it hit, um, I think the can hit Ray in the hand, and it cut Ray. So, Ray had to go try to find, you know, something to, you know, take care of that because, um, you know, Nurse Reed was like, I'm here to take care of the kids. These Y'all going adults can find, you know, the first age yourselves. So then Brooke follows in behind him, and she's like, are you okay? Like, do you need my help? So then Brooke, you know, she's like, you know what? I'll go and see what I can find. So then she goes to the back to the infirmary where Roadkill was, and Roadkill was behind the door, dead. And then she looks, and she sees Mr. Jingles, and she takes off running. <laughs> and like with every white woman in a horror movie, Brooke tripped over everything in the woods, 
but a branch. I'm just like, girl, what the fuck are you tripping over? So then, so then she goes and she finds, she goes to the cabin where the others are, telling the others that Mr. Jingles is there. So they go back to the infirmary, and there is no road care there. And they're like, bro, girl, are you high as fuck? She was like, I didn't even smoke anything. They was like, oh, girl, the contact high is even worse than the actual high, which it is. So then, you know, they all go to sleep, you know, and Brooke hears the phone, payphone ringing, and she goes to try to talk to Montana, and Montana wakes up with her, you know, her, her, her pocket knife in her, in her hand. So then, you know, Brooke goes, and I'm like, why would you go answer the phone? Like, how smart was that to answer the phone? That was very smart, Brooke. And then you can hear, you, all you can hear is the keys jiggling. I'm like, Brooke, you, for that, you actually deserve to die. But you guys, so far it was it was a great opening episode. I enjoyed every single minute of it. I know I'm enjoying every episode this season. So be sure to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys later. I have to do Real Housewives of Dallas and um, Black Ink Group content.